Let's talk about Frederick Backman. Let's talk about all his books, except not the nonfiction, because I forgot it existed till 10 minutes ago. Let's talk about books. Hi, my name is Sarah, and welcome back to Freshly Learned Books. I apologize to anybody that's new here uh, for that intro. I thought of it in the shower, and I couldn't not. So here we go. Come along on this journey with me through the wondrous world of Frederick Backman. So, who is Frederick Backman to begin with? Well, obviously he's an author. This is a book YouTube channel, so, you know, I don't know what you were expecting. But, uh, Frederick Backman is... I am in a weird mood today. <laughs> Frederick Backman is a Swedish author who wrote tons of bestsellers that have been translated into English and, bunch of, and a bunch of other languages and everybody just like loves them. I happen to have read almost all of them. I forgot that he has a nonfiction book, Things My Son Needs to Know About the World, which I'm sure is absolutely lovely. Um, I just haven't read it, uh, but you should. <laughs> Let me know how it is. How much do you love that less than two minutes into this, you already have homework? So I first heard of Frederick Backman quite a few years ago but I think he had already two novels out at the time and the third one was coming out. For most people, especially people that live in the book universe, know about a man called Uva, which I have mispronounced this in five billion different ways and I'm pretty sure I finally have the right one after watching the movie in Swedish. But um, if I don't, you know, feel free to correct me. But A Man Called Uwe came out, I believe, in 2012 and then was translated into English in 2013. It didn't do too well immediately, but after a bit it just like grew and grew and now it is an insanely popular book. It was on the bestseller list 18 months after it was first published and was there for at least 42 weeks, according to this article. So yeah, pretty, pretty big deal, pretty big book. I personally really liked it. It's one of my favorites by him. I've read it three times, um, which is really just because, so I, I read it and then I got a book club and then I wanted them to read it. So I suggested it and we voted on it and that became one of our books. So then I reread it for the book club like a year after. And then actually a few months ago, I read it for the third time. I do this thing for Christmas for my mom where I read a book and record myself so that she has like kind of a personal audiobook and it has my reactions to things along with it. So I chose a man called Uva for that one just because I thought it was really sweet. I thought that she would really love it. And the reason why I only finished it a few months ago is because I'm a terrible daughter and I was really late for the Christmas present. Also, to be fair, um, I didn't see her for Christmas this year or last year. I was with Curtis's family and we saw them for Thanksgiving. So like it was our already our off year. Uh, but to be fair, when your gift is a basically an audiobook, you can send those digitally, believe it or not. So that puts me back into the bad daughter area. But whatever, she's got it now. <laughs> I made it to I got it to her in time for Mother's Day. Oh god, I'm terrible. <laughs> and then coined it as two different presents. So about the book. A Man Called Uva is about an old kind of curmudgeon -y man called Uva. And he's not even that old, actually. He's like 50-something. But anytime you hear the book described, he's always like described as an old man, which makes me think of like 70s. But maybe that's because I live in Florida. And old here means something a bit different. But he uh, lives alone in like this little community that he has been in since the community was started and he's this huge stickler for the rules he goes around basically making sure that everybody is following them at all times so i definitely spoiled this book without meaning to during this section and wanted to kind of redo my description but making sure that it's spoiler free but the story focuses on uva who is kind of this bitter man that sticks very strictly to his routines that he set in place for himself and then throughout the book you learn more about his life both in the past and his current life and you get to see these glimpses of a sweet person inside his rough exterior. It'll make you cry for sure. It <laughs> made me cry all three times, <laughs> multiple times. So Backman actually got his idea for Uva when a colleague of his wrote an article for the website that he worked for, or magazine, and they had a website 
Um, but anyways, he wrote this blog post about a guy who kind of blew up at a ticketing counter, and his name was Uva. And Backman's wife ended up reading that article and saying, oh, this is kind of like you. So then Frederick Backman started posting blog posts on that same website under the heading, I am a man called Uva. So these blog posts included Backman's own pet peeves and things that he got angry about. And then Backman has this great quote when talking about Uva that uh, there's a lot of me and him. When we get angry, it's about a principle and we get angry because people don't understand why we're angry. And I think that's just a great way to sum up Uva in general. So I'll also include a link in the description to this New York Times article where I'm getting uh, this information from as far as the beginnings of A Man Called Uva. And there's a lot more great stuff in it. If you want to read it, I highly recommend it. After that, Frederick Backman came out with My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, which I believe has a different title in the UK, which is like, My Grandmother Asked Me to Send you her regards and apologies that's not right but something along those lines that one i liked i didn't like as much as a man called uva for sure uh it already didn't seem quite as much up my alley it was still very sweet still like great premise so this story follows a seven-year-old girl elsa who was very close to her grandmother who passed away and then she's going around and talking to the different people that her grandmother knew throughout her life, and she slowly learns more and more about her grandmother as a person as opposed to just being her grandmother. I think the reason why this one didn't sit super well with me was just because I get really bothered about reading about young characters that sound like they're much older. It's why John Green, I just can't read him anymore. I, I have, I read two books by him, and they were enjoyable enough, like plot, the plot was enjoyable for me, but the dialogue just killed me. And I think that this book falls under that same area, which I feel like Frederick Backman does quite a bit throughout his books with other characters of his that are younger, but this one is just put at the forefront because the main character is a seven-year-old girl. So that's why for me, this one is probably my least favorite of Frederick Backman's books. Oh, and this one came out in 2013 in Sweden and 2015 in the US. But the great thing about My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry is that it introduced us to the character Britt Marie, who is one of my favorite characters from Frederick Backman's novels. And then the next book he published was titled Britt Marie Was Here and followed her after the end of My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. <sighs> he really likes his long titles. So Britt Marie was introduced in My Grandmother. You kind of get these little bits and pieces of her backstory while you're following Elsa. She lives in the same building as her. And Britt Marie doesn't exactly seem like a character that you would want to follow for a whole book, but throughout it, you start kind of seeing like, oh, okay, she's human too, and she's dealing with her own things. And then in Britt Marie Was Here, the premise is Britt Marie kind of stepping out on her own and leaving her husband after finding out that he's been unfaithful to her. And she ends up in this super small town in Sweden and finds herself a new job and she hasn't had a job in several, several years. And then she starts making connections with this community. She gets big into the little soccer or football community that's in the town and it's so so sweet and she's it's very much reminiscent of a man called uva where you have this character that on paper at first is not very likable but then as you see them make these connections and you know more about their history then you come to love them more and more uh, and not even despite their eccentricities but because of them so next, in 2016, Bear Town comes out. And this is kind of a stretch for Frederick Backman. It's different than the books we've seen so far. It's not following just one main character, but instead a group of characters. And it's really more following a town, hence Bear Town, than it is any one person. So you kind of get this idea through his first three novels that he really enjoys writing in a small town, particularly in Brit Marie but this is where it all kind of comes to fruition. And it's not just the good parts about a small town, it's also a lot of the bad parts and different secrets that the town has and what they're willing to do to cover up those secrets just for like a successful hockey league. It dives into a lot deeper of topics, but it still has like the lightness or the lighter moments 
that Frederick Backman is really good at writing. So for those reasons, and also just because I love the idea of this town that is so centered on like hockey, uh, there's something about a, a small town centered on a sport that is just really sweet, even though it doesn't seem as sweet the more you read. Just the setting in general, it was enough to draw me into reading the book, and then the story made it so much better. Uh, particular things that I like about it is that the characters are not just like one-dimensional characters. For it, following so many different ones, they've really all got their own personality and their own kind of competing traits and you know the struggles of each one and why they're struggling with those things. And it's got just like a lot of great messages in general. It's really, it's really a good book. So Beartown is definitely my favorite Frederick Backman book. In that same year, uh, Frederick Backman's first novella came out, which is every day, nope, every morning the home, oh God, okay, it's a long one. Uh, which is every morning the walk home gets longer and longer. Nailed it. I'm gonna continue to call that every morning from here on out. <laughs> um, but this book, or this novella, it's really short. I think it's about like 90 pages, but oh my gosh, it will like rip your heart out. I cried so much when I read this. But basically it is about a grandfather and his grandson Noah who take these walks together and his grandfather tells him about his past and all of these memories that he's had. But it's it's pretty clear that the grandfather is struggling to remember certain things and even to sometimes know where he is or why he's there. And it's just, even now I'm starting to get sad just talking about it. But oh, I really did love it as well. And I want to put this up there as like my second favorite by him, but it's just so hard for me because it's it's so very short and I don't think it's one that I could read over and over just because of what it does to me. Um, so probably A Man Called Uva would be my second favorite, but then this would definitely be the third. I forgot about Brit Marie. Oh my gosh, I really like Brit Marie though. This is tied with Brit Marie for third. So after having both Bear Town and Every Morning come out, in 2016, then in 2017, Us Against You, which is the sequel to Bear Town, was published. So this story is set in, of course, the same town as Bear Town, and it's following the same groups of people. You get a little bit more from the characters that you knew in the first book, and also a few more characters that you didn't really hear a lot about in the first book, but now you get to hear a bit more about. I find it hard to talk about this without spoiling anything from the first book, but I really enjoyed it. I have a hard time ranking this one among the other ones. I really did love reading it, but I think a large part of that was just because of how much I loved Bear Town, and this did really feel like an extension of that, and so I kind of wanted to just like be grouped with Bear Town wherever Bear Town is on my list. So if I could just like smush those together and have them share my top space without bumping the other ones down a level, that would be great. <laughs> And then once again, he came out with a novella in that same year called The Deal of a Lifetime. This one was another pretty heart-wrenching one. It did not get to me as much as Every Morning did, but it is about this man that kind of sacrificed his family and like his family connections to be successful in his life. And then he meets a little girl who is going through uh, quite a tough time, has a pretty severe illness, and he just has these conversations with her. So it's about their connection as strangers, but kind of getting to know each other more and more with the premise being, you know, what what really makes your life mean something? Is it being just like successful or is it the connections you make along those lines? Another one that's about 90 pages long, super short, uh, but really, really sweet. And um, I can't remember if I cried, but if I had to say probably yes. Uh, because I don't think I've read anything by Frederick Backman and not cried, but that's to say uh, I also cried during almost every book that I read because I'm a total baby and I get way too connected to characters even when I don't like them. So... <laughs> so that is technically the last one. Now, like I said earlier, he did write a nonfiction called Things My Son Needs to Know About the World. This came out the same year as Uva because uh, a man called Uva kept getting rejected by publishers, so then he ended up making his nonfiction kind of collection, 
and they ended up being published in the same year of 2012 in Sweden. Uh, however, it wasn't published in the US and translated into English until 2019. So that's after all of the books we kind of talked about already. And then finally, coming out this year is another novel by him called Anxious People. So that is coming out September 8th, 2020. Um, I can't wait. I'm really excited for it. It's been a while. It's been since 2017 that we've gotten a new novel from him. So very much looking forward to it. Uh, but the synopsis is viewing an apartment normally doesn't turn into a life or death situation, but this particular open house becomes just that when a failed bank robber bursts in and takes everyone in the apartment hostage. Oh my gosh, that sounds like the most exciting premise, I think, for a Frederick Backman novel. That's something that I would pick up regardless of the author just hearing that synopsis. So definitely looking forward to that one. Now, as for the final rankings of <laughs> Frederick Backman's books, in my own personal opinion, which is, I'm sure, very different than others. I already know people that <laughs> have very different opinions as far as which books they would place where on their list. But for me, I would say up at the top is Beartown, along with its sequel, Us Against You. Below that being a man called Uva, then Britt Marie was here, tied with <laughs> Every Morning the Walk Home Gets Longer and Longer, and then probably The Deal of a Lifetime, and lastly on the, on the bottom would be My Grandmother Told Me to Tell You She's Sorry. However, I do know people who they say that that is their favorite Frederick Backman novel, so grain of salt. If you are looking to get into Frederick Backman and you haven't read anything by him so far, I would suggest either starting with A Man Called Uva or with Beartown, depending on which one just appeals more to you. I think that really they're written for very different people. I think that it's kind of strange I ever picked up A Man Called Uva in the first place because it's not normally a story I would have gone for. So I'm really glad that I did, but Beartown's a book that I would have picked up no matter what, and it did end up being my favorite. It really just depends on a few things. If you like more plot-heavy books, then probably Beartown's the best place to start for Frederick Backman. But if you're more about a character and all the ins and outs of that character and why they are the way that they are, how their past made them into the person that they are now, then A Man Called Uva is a great place to start. And then I would suggest reading all three of his first books uh, and preferably reading My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry before reading Britt Marie Was Here, just so that you can get that kind of glimpse at Britt Marie beforehand. But yeah, that's really the whole premise of all three of those books, but I think Uva does it best, at least in my opinion, and it's just a great place to start considering it was so very successful for him and really got him started uh, in general, and also knowing that so much of himself is placed into that character, I feel like that adds a lot to it. The best comparison I can make is Uva is like the old man from Up. So if you liked him, then you'll love Uva. So that's it. We talked about all of the books by Frederick Backman, what you should read first, what I love the most. And uh, if you have already read Frederick Backman, please let me know which book by him is your favorite that you've read so far, even if you haven't read all of them, uh, how you felt about them. And specifically, if you've read um, him, one of the books from before Beartown and then like Beartown and Us Against You. Which of those do you like better from him? Do you prefer the in-depth character analysis or do you prefer the story with the tons of different characters in it? I'd love to know. All right, thanks so much for watching and uh, please subscribe if you'd like. I also have an Instagram channel now that's for this YouTube channel, so check that out. It'll be in the description and uh, links to any of the information that I got for this video will be in the description as well. So thanks again for watching and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye.